Hello, hello, hello. So this is going to be a very basic type of tutorial. I'll try not to take too long. But um, let's just start. And maybe I'll call this something like, you know, so you want to do mods in Fallout 4, or now you want to mod in Fallout 4, whatever. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a start, okay? Anyway, um, so you come into Fallout 4, and this is the menu you have right here. These are the options you have. So let's just say that you come in and you want to add some mods. You come into mods, you click on that. That's going to load up. We're just going to call it the mod manager. Now Fallout 4 and Skyrim's mod managers are very similar, but for our purposes, I'm just going to talk about Fallout 4. Uh, there are extremely minor differences. Uh, but still, I'm going to do a separate thing for Scott. Okay, and this is because uh, we're getting more people. Since this has gone to Game Pass, Skyrim, and Fallout 4, and more people have gotten interested in this, and they just don't know where to start. So let's say you're in Fallout 4 now, and you want to do some mods. Now, you're going to be, be presented with this list on Bethesda. Okay, and... You may not have a My Library or My Favorites if this is your first time in. You may not have anything in these areas, and that's fine. But you'll see all these mods out here, and you're like, well, I don't know where to get started. I don't know what to do. I understand that. Okay, I do. I remember that. Uh, it's It's been years ago, but I do remember coming in and just um, getting started. And I didn't really know what I was doing, so I just jumped right in. And you can certainly do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, there's all these different categories. And uh, when modders put their mods out here, they should mark their mod appropriately so that their mod is in the appropriate categories and not in other categories where it's not appropriate. However, we find that some mod modders overdo it and their mod will show up in a ton of different categories, even categories they don't belong in, okay? I'm not being overly particular or fussing. I'm just saying that does happen, all right? Now, while other modders will be much more specific and they will put their um, mods, they'll categorize their mods more properly, we'll say, okay? All right, so you come in here. Now, if you hit Y, you'll notice down at the bottom there's the the little menu details, Y, search, and B for back. Now, if you hit B for back, it's going to throw you out to the menu. Okay, so don't do that. This The load time to get in and out of here is atrocious. So don't hit B unless you're really ready to get out of this. If you hit A for details, that's that means you're going to click on one of these mods, okay? Let's just pick on Young Sean here. We hit A, and it's going to bring you into the details. The picture may take a moment to load. But um, it's going to give you a description over there. Some descriptions are better than others. But this one's fairly straightforward. Makes Sean younger looking by removing his wrinkles and beard as well as darkening the hair, his hair. It tells you the author over here on the left upper side, Vendetta 4444. How many fours did I say? I don't know. Anyway, and it shows you the size of the mod. The size of the mod is very small, 1.28 kilobytes. It allows you to favorite it if you wanted to mark it as a favorite mod of yours so you could find it easier in the future. Marking it a favorite will cause it to be up here in this list of your favorites. Where it says my favorites, that's that's my favorites. That will be your favorites. So by marking it a favorite, it will show up here like this college. Cool, cool t-shirts. I'm going to favorite that. Ta-da. Now you'll notice it's down here under my favorites. It was already in my library. My library, the way I do my library is I go out to the Bethesda website and handle my um, adding things to my library so that I can come in here on the console and see a whole bunch of new mods that I want to try to do some shows on. Now my, my use of this is different than some people because I'm trying to do a lot of shows. I'm not necessarily just trying to create a game that I want to play, but I'm doing different things, you know. So anyway, 
So this normally my library would represent well, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so that was details. If you click A on any of these mods, it will give you the details of that mod, right? Okay, now let's look at Y. Y is load order, okay? Now, if I press Y on my controller, it's gonna show me the list of mods. Now, if this is your first time coming in, this is gonna be empty. You're not gonna have anything here, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Because um, if it's your first time, you've not had a chance to do anything. But this will show you a list of mods that I have. Now you can, well, let's show you the, let's just roll through this real fast. Um, it just shows a list of mods I have. Now notice I have, most of my mods have a check mark beside them, meaning they are turned on or enabled. But I also have a number of mods here that I have not turned on. I have not enabled them. Me, the way I do this, I'm preparing to do shows on these mods. I have them downloaded. I put them in the load order where I want them, but I have not activated them. I've not enabled them because I was not ready to do my show. For your purposes, you're going to be, let's say you're going to be playing a game. And what you're going to do is you're going to download these, put them in your load order, put them where you want them. And you will probably always enable them and then try them out. Now, there may be specific times when you're testing or you want to compare one mod to another that you will turn one mod off and turn the other mod on and then do the vice versa so that you can compare the two mods. Like if you had two, let me see, what would be a good example? If you had two water mods and you wanted to see the difference in how they looked, now I only have one, but that would be a way of doing that was to enable one, go in the game, check it out, see how it looks, come back, enable the other one and turn the, you know, turn the first one off and enable the other one and then go back in the game and check again. So that, but this is a list. Now I want you to understand when it's called a load order, it is just a list. Okay. It is a list of mods. And what it is, is it's like, Imagine it's like a table of contents. The game will read and load these mods in this order from top to bottom. Now the game will read this list and load these mods from top to bottom. So whenever I start my game up and I do uh, continue or I load my game and I go into play, it's going to read and load these. It's going to start up here and it's going to load that one. Then it'll load this one, then that one, then this one, then that one, then this, you know, so forth, etc. I'm probably driving you crazy. But I want to make sure you understand that. That is all this list does. You will download a mod. It will be added to this list. It will be added to the bottom. Now, probably most of the times, not every mod you're going to want added will be added to the bottom. You know, that's not, I said that incorrectly. Hold on. Usually, you do not want to leave the mod at the bottom. You don't want just every random mod to be put at the bottom of your load order. That's, you just don't. It's just a bad idea because then you'll have things in a weird order. Because what you want to do is you want to organize your mods in a logical, sensible way so that you're building your game. Hopefully, from the bottom up, you're saying... You know, you're starting up here. Now, these are, I'm going to tell you in Fallout 4, one of the differences is there are master files. These master files up here at the top, I think I have these four. I think that's all there are for my game. They have to go at the top. So if I try to move them, like watch this, I'm going to move this patch. I'm going to move it way down here. And I'm going to say, yeah, I want it down here. And it says, uh, no, you're not, buddy. No, I'm a master file. I'm going to go up towards the top of your game. Okay, now there are not a lot of these, but there are some. Now, for me, I know that these four are master files, and they're always going to pop themselves up top, or master mods, however you want to say that. And uh, I know they're always going to push themselves up to the top. I have a specific order I like them in. I like to go ahead and just get the patch done, and then I want this to load in the extra things that it does and then I want the cheat room established and then I do my settlement electricity overhaul. Now, 
Again, if you try to move these master files down, they will not cooperate. They will move themselves right back up into this master file area. Other mods, like I said, that's a low percentage of mods, but there are some. <clears throat> Other mods, like display enhancements, is not, if I remember correctly, and you can move it to wherever you want and it will stay there. See how it just stayed in position when I released it? And if I try to move it up here, guess what happens? They throw it out. <laughs> they push it back down. I have it where I like it. But uh, um, in your load order, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a guide up that you can look at. I have a just a general load order guide. Don't consider it like uh, you know. Some people like to say that. Well, you have to follow this. It's like you know. This is absolutely the only option you have. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, it's a general load order guide and in general it works very well however you have to understand that when modders are creating mods sometimes they need to do things in a different way they don't always do things exactly the same way they don't always do things the way you or i would do it um, and like i say sometimes there's technically good reasons for what they do and then they will tell you in their comments in the description over here on the right hand side you'll see the description of the mod they will tell you hey this mod really needs to be down at the bottom or it really needs to be high up or you need to put this with your you know texture mods or your quest mods or you know sometimes they will advise you on where you should put their mod and you want to try to follow that when you can I know there's times when you can't, and sometimes you have to play around with the mods. Sometimes you're going to have to move things up and down in this list order, load order, to get it to work. The reason for that is, like I said, this is just a load order. The, the program is going to read, you know, your game is going to read these mods in in this order and load. Whatever the lower mod is, the lowest mod will always win. It will always have precedence. Let's say I had two mods that changed Piper. Okay, whichever was the last mod that changed Piper, that is the mod that is going to win. It is going to be the one that you're really going to see. Now, if they change different things about Piper, let's say I had two mods. One mod gives Piper certain weapons. One mod changes her appearance. It's possible that they will both work without trouble usually you're going to have trouble you normally don't want two mods doing the same thing however there are times when they're doing specifically different things that you can get away with it but the one at the bottom the last one is going to win if there's any kind of conflict if they both change her hair the one at the bottom is going to change her hair um let's see is there anything else that's the main takeaway now, in general, um, I'll have my load order guide posted with this uh, in my video description. So I'm not going to try to recreate that off the top of my head right now. But in general, you can see the different things I do and the way I do them. Now, understand that I'm doing a load order and I'm creating a game that I do play it. But at the same time, I'm doing it largely for shows to create shows or entertainment value so mine may not um, jive with something that you want to do and it's going to be very subjective you're going to do whatever kind of mods that you like maybe you just want a ton of weapons maybe you want a lot of appearance mods maybe you want a lot of different clothes it's up to you you can do all kinds of things maybe you like multiple followers or whatever who knows you can do whatever you want there are a couple of suggestions i'm going to make okay Let's scroll back up here. Now, by and large, most of the mods I have pretty subjective whether you want them or not or whether you like them or not. One thing I would suggest you do if you're going to be modding anyway is you use this mod. Um, I'm just going to call it AuxCR. It's an excellent mod. It allows a lot of other mods to work and, and it gives you a lot of um, fun things you can do. I'm not going to try to go into all the details. In this case, it's not too big. It's only about 39 megabytes. I'm just going to say it's a framework mod that you will really enjoy and you will want to have it. 
cheat room. I would always suggest that you have the cheat room. Now the cheat room, this is the main master file for the cheat room and there are some other additions. If you have the DLC for these, go ahead and get those too. Okay, if you don't have the DLC, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Just download this. <clears throat> it's a very small mod, but I find the cheat room is just so useful for so many different things. Now, if you really are not interested in cheating or not interested in it, then fine. Don't use it. That's fine. But I'm just saying that is it's a very good mod that I would always suggest you have just in case you want to experiment and play around and do fun things. Um, a lot of this other stuff is very um, optional, uh, but Armor Smith Extended. Armor Smith Extended should always be in your load order, in my opinion. Okay, it goes with this AUK CR. I, I I kind of think of them in my head as going together because they help you in your um, your armor and your outfits. I'm not going to read this whole description to you. But those two do a lot. Now, this is a much bigger mod. It's 212 megabytes, and I understand that. And I know we have limited space. But just believe me that I, I don't know. Somebody would have to tell me if they don't use this and why they wouldn't use this. Maybe maybe they feel it's too much of a cheat. But to me, um, this, this is something that you would just naturally want to have to me. Okay? All right. Um, let's see, is there anything else that I would really suggest is almost, I mean, and mind you, I'm saying that really you should probably have these all the time. And, and the reason is because these are mods that really um, make sense to me. Now, maybe you'll say, no, I don't want that. Okay, that's fine. If you're going to do appearance mods, uh, if you're going to do a lot of character changing mods, uh, then you may probably want this because it helps fix certain brown face and black face uh, bugs and they are bugs and they're pretty ugly so um, however you can go I played a while without this and then over time I was just like you know I really need that so so I used it and I still use it now so let's see anything else um, I would say this mod is a must Mods menu cap increased. Now the reason I say this is that um, this allows you to see a lot more mods out here in this list. Without that mod, you would only get about 90 mods. You'd be able to see 90 in a row. But with that mod, I know good and well that I can see well over, I think I can see around 250, but well over the limit of 90. The, the base default limit is about 90 mods. And historically, when you get a lot of favorites and you get a lot of things in your library from the website, but you don't necessarily have them all downloaded, then uh, you're going to want to be able to see more than 90. Okay, So this mod, let me show you that again. This mod, I would say, is a requirement. It's very teeny tiny. It's mods menu cap increased. 146 bytes. It's not even one kilobyte. You want this mod. Okay? You really do. If you're on an Xbox, you want this mod. Okay? Now, there's two versions of things that you can do for alternate start. I, when I'm doing my shows, I prefer this alternate start. However, when I'm actually just playing, like on, I have... Okay, I have two Xboxes because one is my wife's, the toaster, and uh, I keep her a game, and I use that game also for playing and fooling around. And on her machine, I use a different alternate start. I think it's called like Start Me Up. There's a little Start Me Up series of mods. Um, and it, you want some kind of alternate start more than likely. Now, if you don't, then don't. That's fine. But if you do, the alternate start I'm using here is very good. And the start me up, which allows you to do a lot. I think it's start me up. I hope I'm not saying that wrong. Um, it allows you to do some randomization and stuff. And I really like it. Let's see. Start me up. Come on. Be nice to me. I know you're here. Don't hide from me. 
Um, anyway, it's a very good kind of alternate star thing. It, it's, it does it a little... The two mods, you can't use them together. They're different. Um, they, uh, you have to choose one or the other. Um, and they have a different um, style in the way they star you up. That's not it. Okay, hold on. So here's some patches, but that's not it. Hold on. We're getting there. The older mods are always going to be off to the right. So it takes a minute. Um, that's another patch. We're not there yet. Okay, visible weapons. Here's start me up. Okay, so here's some different start me up. These are alternatives, okay? Now you can do a basic version. You can do, um, these are with dialogue overhaul. Let's see. And I think, I'm trying to remember, I think I use... I think I use the very basic, the most basic version, so I don't have to worry about it, and I can just do prompts, and I don't really worry about the dialogue changes. Um, let's see. That's for Far Harbor. Oh, well. Anyway, you get the idea. This, is a, this one is a little more complicated, because there's a couple of patches and stuff that you need. Um, but it does work. And it has its own flair, the way it works, and it's fun. But this is like the patch for Nuka World, then the patch for Far Harbor. But I think I just used, I think I just used the, what's this? This is the basic version. I think I used just the basic version. Yeah, because this one's this one gives you some different dialogue prompts and, and different things. I don't think I wanted to deal with all that. I think I did the basic. And it works very well. And I think I did a uh I did of course the patches because I have the Far Harbor and the Nuka World. But if you if you don't have those, you don't have to do those patches at all. It's fine. Um so anyway, um so that's the basic version that I used. It's a, it's another alternate star. It just allows you to start your game and not start it the same as the vanilla, vanilla game every time. Okay? All right. So I've tried to run through and give you some basic ideas here. And I have an alarm going off. My phone is going crazy. Sorry about that. But uh, that's some uh, Fallout New Vegas music. <laughs> but anyway... Um, so I'm going to need to go, and I will I will come back and see if there's anything further that I can add to this, okay? All right, so I'll be back in a minute. Working. All right, so I'm back. Sorry about that. All right, so anyway, so I've shown you the alternate starts, and uh, that's something that's Im important. I'm trying to just give you some basic advice to help you get started. Now, beyond the mods that I really think you should have, there are so many options that it's very hard for me to tell you what else you should do. There are a ton of options of outfits. There are uh, weapons. Weapons in Fallout 4, I have to say, I think weapons are the most fun. Um, just trying out the different weapons is a lot of fun. Um, you get something like this, Ice Storms. <laughs> grenade launcher and that and i mean it looks cool and it probably is a lot of fun now i have not tried this particular mod i just grabbed this in random this one randomly okay um but it is um it is pretty cool and uh it looks pretty cool and it probably is there's a number of different weapon mods that are a lot of fun now, admittedly, sometimes some of these mods come and go. Somebody will take a mod down. I don't know why. And then you'll see that same mod pop back up later. Again, I don't know why. So, uh, some things I'm looking at doing. Let's just go over some things I'm looking at doing, okay? Was I wanted to do some of these revived settlements. Like, this one is for Ten Pines Bluff. It's supposed to make them look a little better and seem more... Um, do they have, do they say this in a better way? Anyway, it just makes it look clean and nice. It makes it, it makes it look better, you know? 
and there's more than that. Let me go out here. There's uh, there's some others. There's like a little series. Let me see if I can find it. Here you go. There's uh, <clears throat> Somerville Place. See, and if you notice in the pictures, <clears throat> pardon me, it just makes them look a little better. Just makes them nice. Jamaica Plain. Um, if you've ever wandered through Jamaica Plain and been attacked by all the uh, <laughs> ghouls, you might appreciate it if it's a little cleaner. These are Now, these are mods I have not tried yet, but I'm just saying, as an example, you could do this type of thing where you make some of your settlements look better. Um, there is also one mod I wanted to look at, and it's newer. Rats. Oh yeah, it's this new... If you look up Boston Natural Surroundings, there are actually several different versions. And I've already tried one version in the past, but I haven't tried this new version. Let me just show you this. Now I may be I may be inundating Oh man. I may be inundating you with ideas, but it's something you can do. This will make let me just do this. This will make your Boston area look a little more green and lively and it's it's a pretty good size mod however okay so like i think the one i used was the 2.2 now it's pretty big it's 238 megabytes basically and but it was very nice it really added some nice trees and different things to the surrounding area it looked cool it made it look like maybe you were growing out of the fallout you know <laughs> maybe you're getting beyond that time and I think this is going to be very similar. Um, I'm not even sure what they say if this did anything. This features newly made spruce trees along with Scott's pine and new grasses. So, it sounds like they've spruced it up a little bit. Ha, 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 ha. So, it should be pretty cool though. Um, <clears throat> so, this is, this is the one I used was about 238 megabytes. The new one... The new one's bigger. It's almost 276 megabytes. So it's something to consider. It's bigger. Now, when you get into some of these mods, there's one cautionary tale I want to tell you. When you get into some of these mods, especially green mods or things that do big overhauls, um, when you go downtown into Boston, in the Boston downtown area, if you get a lot of stuttering, frame rate drops, crashing, it's because usually of one of the uh, higher end uh, mods. If you're doing um, too much, you know, the game, the, this game just cannot handle too, too much. Uh, if you, if you have, it's hard to, this is hard to define because there is no, we don't have any specific limitation. We don't know exactly what the issue is, except, um, that with Fallout 4, um, if you get too many overhauls going, if you get too much going on, then your downtown area will, it will just, the frame rate will drop, your game will crash. Um, some people have tried to tie it back to uh, hardware, but it's not a hardware issue. It's, it's honestly just a uh, game issue, too much, you know, too many mods, too many uh, things thrown into the game will, will make it crash. And, this is true for any game, honestly. If you mod the game to a certain extent, at some point, you're probably going to break the game. Now, in a high-powered PC world, you can get away with a lot more. Um, I am on the Xbox One X. Now, if you're on the original Xbox, there's, you're going to be able to do less. I'm just going to tell you, I used the original Xbox One. Uh, yeah, the original Xbox. I didn't mean that. The original Xbox One. The original Xbox One, I used it for years, and it is it is a little more limited. Okay, when I moved to the Xbox One X, I did notice that I could do a little more, not a ton more, because you know Fallout 4, the game still has its limitations. There's a reason. Now Fallout 4, if you look at Fallout 4, you're limited in space. I want to hit Y to go to the load order again. Up in the upper right hand corner, you can see free space. Even when you come in and all this is cleared out in the beginning, your free space is only going to be about 2 gigabytes. Okay? Fallout 4 only allows you to have about 2 gigabytes of mods. And I think the numeric limitation... 
rats. Have I already forgotten? I think it's about 150 for the sheer number of mods if you had a bunch of little bitty mods. Uh, more than likely you're not going to hit the numeric limit, though you can. I have done that before with Skyrim. I've not done that in Fallout 4. But um, space-wise, you only have two gigabytes, so you're only going to pick probably a few big mods and then you're going to have some little mods that do some things you want. And you're probably going to be done. Um, if you want a place to start, and I have not used Natural Surroundings 2.4, so I'm not going to tell you to start with that. Okay, I have not used it. This one I used, I thought it was good. I have several, I think I have, well, I have multiple shows that have it in the load order, but I know I did a show on it. Okay. So, this was a good mod that didn't give me any issues. Now, there is another mod that you can look at. That helps make your Boston look good. And another big change mod is Vivid All-in-One. Now, it is a big mod, so I don't want you to be surprised. I'm just trying to give you some basic idea of where to start that will make your game look better. Vivid. Vivid. This is, this is a bit of Vivid All-in-One, but this is just a piece of it. Let's find the big one. Let's find Vivid All-in-One, which, um, here we go. Vivid Fallout All-in-One. It's over 500 megabytes, that's why I say it's big, okay? But it does clean up and make some things look really nice, okay? It does. It makes things look better. Now, adm admittedly, it's within the game, so there's only so much that can be done. But it does make things look better. So that's a good start. Um, the Boston Natural Surroundings is good. If you want something like a fun weather mod, I'll tell you what favorite weather mod lately is NAC. Now, you don't have to use NAC Lite. I don't even know why I have NAC Lite there. I wonder if they changed this. They may have updated this. Let me see what this is. This is the Lite version of NAC X. Huh. The full version is going through... Now, I... Okay, okay. They must be developing a new version that they're calling the full version. Because in the past, it was just Knack. There was no Knack Lite that I remember. Um, let's just do this. We'll just see what we find. So, yeah, okay. So, in the past, this was just Knack. But now, I guess, they it was Knack X. But now, they're going to make it Knack, Knack X Lite. And they're, they're doing some big version. Okay, don't worry about their new big version. This is a fun cool weather mod um, it is pretty big now it's it's like 89 megabytes and it's got two patches if you have these DLCs okay. so there's just a few mods that you could start with you could download those and put those in your load order um, in general in general how I would do that would be I would have let's go to the load order in general I would have like these mods here and then I would probably have Vivid Fallout all in one. And then I'd have Boston Natural Surroundings. And then below that, I would do the, uh, what was the other one I said? Oh, the NAC X. Just in general. Now, if you prefer, now this is assuming you're just going to do a few mods like that. Okay. If you're going to come in and do a ton of mods, you know, then go look at the general load order. Um, in general, you could put the weather mod, the NAC X, you could put that above Vivid Fallout All-in-One, and that would be fine, because it is a weather mod. They're not going to conflict. Um, you could put it above, and, and that may even be how I have my general load order scoped out. You'll have to look at that. Like I said, it's hard for me to remember that list off the top of my head. So, in a very general, just basic starting sense, I hope that is helpful. Now... Admittedly, I did not have a clean slate to show you this with. I, I am, you know, in the middle of a game and I have a load order already. And, you know, I've been doing shows on this. So, but I'm hoping that as tutorials go, this will at least help you get a start. If you don't know what else to do, just try coming in, downloading, you know, a couple of mods and, and make it something like, you know, uh, not too complicated. If, if you really are interested in the appearance and the weather and the landscape, 
then go straight for the weapons. The weapons are fun. Find you some fun weapons. Um, there are some cool uh, sci-fi weapons. Let me see. Let me find something fun before I get done here. Weapons. I want weapons. Okay, I'm not finding what I want. There are some cool sci-fi weapons. Let me see if I can... Let's see if we just say sci-fi, what we'll get. I mean, it may or may not give us what we want, but let's try it. Some people don't like this abbreviation. I'm an old guy, and it's an old abbreviation. It doesn't bother me. All right, well, okay, so here you get that grenade launcher. You get this laser rifle, uh, cyberpunk pistol, hazmat suits. Oh, we really didn't get much. You get some sci-fi poster stuff. Okay, so this wasn't the best. I'm sorry. I thought we would find more um, more things than that. Let's try... Um, uh, well, as an example, this is probably not the best example, but you can do... You can do Star Trek or Star Wars, and you will find a number of things. Oh, wow. The Star Trek stuff is really... You can still get the hand phaser. Okay. See, mods come and go so much. Um, people... I'm not sure why some mods get taken down, but they do. It's disappointing. Let's see if there's any other phasers out there. I thought there used to be more phasers. There are. So there are more phasers and nebulizers and heavy atoms. So there are some different things out here. You can look for these. Uh, you can always look for Star Wars stuff if you're a Star Wars fan. And there's usually a good number of things out here. And there's a number of like Halo things. Now these are just me rambling on, giving you some examples of things you can look for. There's a lot of Star Wars stuff. There's more than is being shown here. But this is just a quick, a quick example. I think, um, are we missing the clone trooper stuff? Let's see. Let me do clone and see what we find. Because I'm pretty sure there's some cool stuff here. Yeah, clone stuff. I, I haven't checked these out yet. These are newer versions of something that I had before. So I haven't checked them out yet. And then there's there's a lot of things here, honestly. It's it's so hard to uh, try to show you everything. But uh, if you just want to get into some cool weapons, you can always come down to favorited and see what's what's hot. You know, uh, these packs for some reason these hyper merge packs had gone away and now they're back. So just understand that that's going to happen. These packs tend to have multiple weapons. They're good weapons. And uh, you have to try them out. You have to just download them and try them out. Um, let's see. Here they... Uh, the Unfortunately, sometimes people are taking a little bit of a skimpy attitude towards the description. Like here, items are either in the level list, the chem station, or the cooking station. Well, okay, but which is it? You know, which item is where, you know? Um, I'm not trying to be a pain, but that's that's not a good, helpful description. And sometimes you're going to run into that. Sometimes you're going to look at the descriptions, and you're going to say, well, that's not very helpful, because here it even says, or quests, but it doesn't tell you which weapon is what. So, uh, you know, I, I prefer a better, and usually Modi Mod Mod 620, is it 620? I'm not sure if they were always 620, but anyway, usually Modi Mod Mod, uh, does a better job. They usually tell you how you can get your things better instead of just having this one-liner that leaves it open to interpretation. Any of these items could be in any of those places, and uh, that's not helpful. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just going to tell it like it is. That's not helpful to us. We're on an Xbox. Um, we're not going to be able to go to all those different links. It's not very easy for us to do that. Yes, we could go out on a computer and do that. That doesn't really help us on the Xbox. And then, even if we do, we don't know for sure that you've not changed the original so that it's located. You know, is it going to be located in the exact same? We don't know. So so those, those descriptions, mod descriptions, sometimes are not as helpful as I would like.
Okay, so I'm just telling you that's one of my things. That's one of my things I grump about. Halo, you can find the Halo stuff. This armor suit is pretty good. However, as big as it is and as good as it is, you cannot use this in third person because it has the uh, it has a glitch to it. <clears throat> they call it the blood spasm glitch. What it is is when you take damage, there's a graphical glitch that occurs and it's really a pain. It's not that it, it, it has never crashed my game, but it is disturbing and it is confusing and it's not fun. However, if you use this and you play first person, you will never see that glitch and it won't bother you. But I just want to make sure that you know that, you know, and there are some other Halo things here. If we look up Halo, if you're like me, I, I like Halo and I have played uh, one of my characters, John, I started him off basically being the chief, you know, just being silly and being the chief. Now, here, let's see, here's an armory port. This is uh, a lot of Halo weapons. And it's actually a very good port, and it presents you with a lot of fun weapons. It is a huge mod, though, 467 megabytes. That is not small. Okay, I'm not kidding. It is not small. <laughs> it's a big mod, but it has a lot of fun weapons, so if you like it, it's worth it. Uh, let's see what else. There's the armor there, of course. There's all kinds of music. Um, I don't deal in the music files very much. This is the service rifle. Is this just that? Yeah, this is just, you know, if you recognize that, the battle rifle really is what I, I mean, it looks, it looks a little bit, but to me, that's the battle rifle, don't you agree? They call it the service rifle, but you notice it's BR, so it's the, it's the battle rifle. Um, anyway, you can craft it at the chem station, so this is a good one, it's easy to get that weapon, it's fun. Um, Project Helljumper allows you to do um, ODST type style armors, and they're they're nice. They look good. I liked it. Uh, I tried this for a while, and again, pretty big. It did not have the blood spasm glitch that I could find, so uh, seemed very good. But it's still pretty big, 379 megabytes. Okay. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful in giving you some ideas of how to start, what you can do. There's a lot of things you can do with mods, but I'm just trying to give you a starting point and help you get started. Again, I will post the uh, general load order guide with this, and if you've not done this before, it's a good start. Now, again, I, I want to call your attention to the menu at the bottom. Don't forget that those are the buttons that you can use. In, on this screen, it's details, load order, and search. When I wanted to do a search, I hit X, and then I enter in using this little keyboard and then I, I do a search on whatever it is, right? Like, well, I didn't do a search, did I? Um, let's see if there's anything for Fred out there. And there is, there's something out there for Fred, I don't know why. But there you go. So you'll find it'll give you a little list here. So. And then B for back takes you back out to the main game menu. You don't want to do that unless you're serious if you're done, because the load, the load screen in Fallout 4 can be pretty atrocious. Um, there's a lot of different categories you can look through and see what you like. There's a lot of different options. People are always making new mods. Uh, Fallout 4 is not quite as busy as Skyrim, but still very busy. There's always new mods to see and look at and appreciate, and people are always doing stuff, so it's it's really pretty cool. It's a good modding community, and it's a good, uh, um, I think it's a good player community, mainly. I know there's always a few bad apples in every group that spoiled a bunch, but I mean, um, I think basically most people are good, and most people try, you know, try to present themselves in a good way and try to be helpful and uh, or if they don't they at least try not to bother others you know so and, and I can I can understand that so anyway I hope this has been somewhat helpful uh, when you change to your load order screen here you can enable and disable mods just like that just by hitting your a button you can disable and you'll notice down at the bottom that, that menu again, you can hit X and you can move it around. 
and hit X to leave it again. And then Y for delete. Make sure you're serious before you do that. Uh, options. There are some options here if you hit the back button. Now notice I'm at the back button on the controller, not the B back button. But you can delete all your mods. I would not recommend doing this unless you're serious. You can disable all your mods. There may be times when you're like, I want to play the vanilla game. Just disable all your mods. Go out and, and like do a reset and come back in. And you'll be able to play without any mods on Let's see, um, and then there's B back as in back to the previous menu, right? Okay, and if I hit B here, I want to show you it's going to take me back out to the main game menu. Now, I made some changes, even though I put everything back the way it was. It noted that I made some changes. It wants to do a reload. Don't be surprised. This takes a minute. I'm not going to make you sit through all this. I think this is a good start. Maybe that will be helpful to you getting started. I hope so. Uh, a lot of these same, same things do apply to Skyrim. Uh, however, there is some minor differences. Skyrim uh, doesn't typically have a lot of master files that push themselves to the top. That's very rare. Uh, so, uh, some minor differences, okay? All right. So, thanks for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I will catch you later. Please help me, save me from this horrible texture, save me, I look so terrible.